What is up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 411 of the Smart Out Moment Smack Talk podcast, Hot Tags of the Week, where I'll be breaking down some of the current events, the rumors, the news, the gossip, and everything else that went down in the world of pro wrestling over the past few days that I feel like talking about, except for the draft. Now, we'll kind of mention a little bit of the draft, but predominantly we're going to save that for a little bit later on. I'm your host as always, Tony Mango, you should know that by now. And before I get started, let me just remind everybody who just needs the reminder that I want to know what you have to say about these topics as well. So if you're on the iTunes or Stitcher or Google Play or Spotify or Anchor or any of the audio-only platforms, first off, do me a favor, leave a star rating or whatever it has on there. That's greatly appreciated. But hop on over to the YouTube. When you're there, hit the like button on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. Ring that little bell for the notifications to be aware of whenever we post these things. And leave a comment below and tell me what you think about these different topics. Because i got about eight or so topics to break down here. And actually, normally what we do here is we usually do this on Monday night after Raw. But I had this feeling that I should wait. And part of it was just that I had an article I had to write up. I was tired. You know, a bunch of different things like that. But I also just felt like something was going to happen on Tuesday. And I... You know, there's been plenty of times in the past where I've done the hot tags and then on Wednesday or something like that, people have run into some situations where maybe, you know, a big injury happened or something like that. And lo and behold, it's a good thing I waited. <laughs> now, I was going to wait until after this whole blockbuster trade thing was supposed to go down. And it seems like that's happening on WWE backstage, which is going to be like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I got other stuff to do, and it's just going to be a problem to try to figure out a way to record that at that point. So you know, just for uh, purposes of knowing what I'm talking about with context, it's about 6.30 right now p.m., so that's when I'm recording this. So this might even go up at the time that that happens, then maybe I'll be already dating myself. But just keep that in mind. Uh, that's actually one of the things I want to talk about. You know what? I might as well just go ahead and talk about it right now. Well, we do have the draft that went down over these past couple of days, and... We still don't know exactly what every part of that is going to entail. One of them being, we have a lot of free agents. And I was kind of hoping that maybe today that they would announce some of the free agents as going to a particular brand. But it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. I mean, by now, I would have thought that they would have already done that. But maybe they'll address it on backstage. But just for anybody's clarification, we still don't know the following people where they are on as far as the whole Raw and SmackDown side of things. And again, we're going to break this a little bit down a little bit later on this week, but we don't know AOP, The Ascension, Big Show, Cesaro, The Clones, Alicia Fox, which she might just be in the legend kind of status now, according to that episode of Raw. Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, Dana Brooke, Drake Maverick, Ember Moon, Fire and Desire, The Hardy Boys, The Iconics, Lars Sullivan, Luke Harper, Mickey James, Mojo Rawley, Naomi, Nia Jax, No Way Jose, Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, Sheamus, and The Usos. We still don't know who those, who those, where those people are going to be going. And one of the stories that came out over the past 24 hours or so has been the reason why The Usos and Naomi weren't a part of the draft was because they don't know what they're going to do with them. Makes a lot of sense, although at the same time, maybe you kind of try to figure that out ahead of time. Just being me, I don't know, I, I like to plan things out well in advance. And the same thing seems to be the case when it comes to Luke Harper, that they're just not willing to do anything with him because he's probably going to leave WWE whenever he gets a chance to, and they're just running out the clock as far as his contract goes. But it's something to keep your mind about that at any given moment we could get some kind of an announcement the way that we did with the supplemental trades after Friday night's uh, SmackDown that maybe like some people like Cesaro for instance they might just be like you know what it's uh, Friday morning we're just gonna say Cesaro's on SmackDown or Fire and Desire they're on SmackDown or Mickey James is on Raw whatever it is you know keep your uh what's about you because i'll try to update the website but you never know when it's going to happen so this blockbuster trade thing we don't know what that entails we're going to get some kind of an announcement tonight and it's supposed to be big i mean they're calling it a blockbuster trade i want to give my predictions i think that this is bray wyatt going from smackdown to raw because he went to smackdown for some reason and I'm not entirely sure who I would say they would trade him for, but there's a couple people that I have in mind. One of them being Rey Mysterio, 
he's kind of the one that I'm leaning the most towards. Kevin Owens is another one of them. He's probably my number two that I can think of right now. And then the only other two that I'm really leaning towards are Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. The reason why I go with those is we know that it's certain people that it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. For instance, it's not going to be Becky Lynch. It's not going to be the OC. Now, that means that there's no trade between, like, Shinsuke Nakamura and that because they would have to do that trade and they would have just done that to begin with. I don't understand the point. And would that really be a blockbuster trade? I think that they need to do something with a big name to really justify what it is. So that might even be, for instance, not Bray Wyatt. It might be like Roman Reigns goes over. But I think that Roman Reigns is staying on SmackDown. I think that a good portion of these trades are not really what they care about. Like, I, I honestly can't imagine that WWE sitting there going, we've got to figure out what happens with the Lucha House Party. But at the same time, I do think that certain people are specifically picked from Paul Heyman and picked from Fox. Like, Fox would really want Roman Reigns. Now, Fox probably also really wanted Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar and Bray Wyatt and everybody who's a name, because why wouldn't they? But... I kind of feel like they did like a little bit of a 50-50 for some of those names, and then some of them just kind of fell through, like, for instance, the Charlotte Flair thing. I still think it's a massive bad idea, but if Paul Heyman really, really wanted Aleister Black, and then you bring Aleister Black in there, you bring Zelina Vega, you bring Andrade, and then you bring Charlotte Flair— I think it's going to be a big mistake with Charlotte Flair, but we'll, you know, we'll, as I mentioned before, we'll get more into the discussion about the draft when it comes to it on our main event this week. So here's where I'm standing. I think that Bray Wyatt goes back to Raw, partially because they announced this whole thing for Crown Jewel. Now, if Bray Wyatt stays on SmackDown, he can't win the Universal Championship. If he does, SmackDown's going to have both of the world titles. It's not going to happen. And I don't think that they're going to trade Brock Lesnar over to Raw because that kind of defeats the whole purpose of him being on SmackDown because that's Fox. That's the sports brand. So that's where I'm kind of not really clear about like who they would trade for, but I'm really thinking Bray Wyatt. And I wanted to get that prediction out there before they do it just to see if I'm right or not. If it ends up being something completely different and ends up being like the big blockbuster trade is that like, uh, heavy machinery comes to Raw in place of EC3 or something, then, hey, I didn't see that coming at the very least, right? So that's one thing. And the fact that they didn't draft certain people, we don't know why they didn't draft some of them, because why wouldn't they put, like, Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville in the draft or something? But one person that we know, one of the reasons why, is Ember Moon. Now, with Ember Moon, she's on the injured list now. She has some kind of, like, an Achilles heel injury that's going to put her out for the next couple of months. So, in that kind of capacity, I can understand why they wouldn't necessarily want to pigeonhole themselves and say, well, we want this person to be on this brand, and then they're kind of forced to stay along with that. But, I mean, look at the way that SmackDown's shaping up to be. They need more women, so why wouldn't you just announce that anyway? More than likely, she would end up going to SmackDown, so just announce it, you know? But that is something else to report on. Ember Moon's going to be out for quite a while. That's really a shame, because WWE's got a lot of people that are missing out on right now. We don't have Ruby Riot. we don't have her, we don't have Mickey James, they don't have Naomi in the mix. So SmackDown's looking kind of bad when it comes to the women's division, at the very least. Let's see what else I should talk about here. Uh, somebody leaving WWE. Let's talk about that. Mike Kanellis has apparently requested his release. Now, he just re-signed in, I think it was July. Might have been June. But something along those lines. They just signed new contracts. And the fact that he's now requesting his release makes me think that something might have happened with this draft. And maybe he realized that 205 Live is going to be where he's stuck. And at that point, I mean, I like 205 Live more than a lot of other people do, but you still have to admit it's a go-nowhere type of zone. You're not going to reach superstardom. You're not going to main event WrestleMania on 205 Live. That's just not how it's going to work. It's it's a supplemental thing. It's Now it's part of the NXT brand, so 
it's not even like a main part of NXT. It's just kind of a side piece. I can kind of understand why Mike Canales would just say, you know what, just let me go to AEW. Because that's probably where he wants to go. Or maybe go to Impact. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be depending upon if anybody wants him, too. And I'm sure certain people are going to want him. But I was curious if this had anything to do with Maria as well. And Maria has come out to say that she did not request her release. So that's very interesting. Now, her specific phrasing was, I have not asked for my release. That doesn't mean that she won't ask for her release. I mean, she is pregnant. What is she going to do without Mike Kanellis? I don't know how they're going to really work that out. But then again, who's to say that he actually gets granted his release? WWE might do the kind of thing where they're like, you know what? You took time off and we're going to tack that onto your career and we're just going to add that to your contract as more time to waste. Because it doesn't seem like they're really letting people go anymore. So I think that we might be hearing nothing from this. Or they might let him continue to wrestle. And they might just put him in that storyline with Brian Kendrick. And they might make him like the fall guy for the next couple of weeks or months or so. I don't know how much is on this contract. If there's like an out clause. Or if this is the type of thing where he signed that new contract and they have him for like five years. And if they say no, like we want you to sit at home for five years, that would suck for him because then he doesn't get to wrestle. And it seems like that's what he wants to do. If I were WWE, honestly, I don't think Mike Kanellis is moving the meter. And if I could get out of that contract and not have to pay him that money, I'd let him go. He's not going to be a model employee that's enjoying his time. He's not going to be making the rounds on the media tours and being a good company guy. You might end up making him fall deeper into his depression and his uh, addiction to painkillers and everything if he's just not happy the way that he is. So just you know it's you're not losing anything it's not like mike canell is going to aew is going to suddenly turn the tides and aew is going to do better ratings than it is it's already beating nxt as it is so it's not going to make a big difference i don't think maria would make a big difference either they tried it didn't work well they didn't really try too hard but i do think that we will very meagerly get some kind of an announcement of this Maybe it'll be in a week or so. Maybe it'll not be for a while. But at some point, I think that they'll just be like quietly saying, well, we let him go. And I think Maria is going to go too, because what is she going to do at that point? So that's one person that's left. Another person, and this is pretty much the big story, although I do have two other things to talk about. But this is like the, ooh, wow, I'm glad that I waited type of thing. Eric Bischoff is no longer employed by WWE. And there hasn't been too much information about this yet. But... They've clarified that he is not just gone from his executive director position. He's gone from WWE entirely. Now, Brian Alvarez, of course, any kind of dirt sheet, no matter how trustworthy or untrustworthy they are, they all have to be taken with a grain of salt. But Alvarez says, this this is a quote I'm going to read from off of uh, this thing. This is from uh, Wrestling Observer, of course. He said, he was doing some stuff, and honest to God, when I asked, I don't even know what he was doing, but I know he was doing enough that nobody liked working under him. I heard of people that wanted to quit who were working under him. So, if that's true, after spending so much time where we don't know what in the world that Eric Bischoff was doing, if anything at all, now something's coming out that the people that worked under him didn't like working under him, and that it must have been bad enough that WWE decided... No, we don't want you to do this anymore. And it's only four months after he moved his whole family and everybody across the country to take this job. It's really strange to me. Why would he take a job that didn't seem to necessarily be to do anything? Why would WWE hire him to do nothing and then be so annoyed with the way that he worked or so disappointed with what his ideas were that that quickly they release him now taking his place is going to be bruce pritchard he has been in wwe for a little while now he came back and it seems like he's worked his way back up the ladder now he's taking on that position so now it's going to be 
Paul Heyman on the Raw side and Pritchard on the SmackDown side as far as the creative goes. I think this is going to be a big story that we're going to find out more and more information about very slowly. And this could be a big factor as far as just like how the presentation of SmackDown goes and how the transition from Vince McMahon away from WWE goes, because I mean, we're getting really close to this idea that XFL is supposed to be starting in just a few months. And I don't know really how that progress is going. It seems like it's not going all that well. So he's going to have to take some time away from that. And that's going to be very interesting to see if he's able to pull that off. And if he wants Bruce Pritchard in there because he trusts him more, then maybe that's Vince's way of having more control. And maybe Bischoff wasn't somebody who was in that kind of capacity. But then again, if you trust this idea that the people that were working with him didn't like what he was doing, then he might have needed to go anyway. But who's to say that the people that didn't like that were the ones that want WWE to be crap, and they're the ones that have been causing these problems all these years. You know, I don't know who whose idea it was to do, like, the Bray Wyatt end for Hell in a Cell, but if that, that idea was Vince McMahon's, or if that was Kevin Dunn's, or anybody's idea in particular, if that person doesn't like what Eric Bischoff is bringing to the table, well, I'm going to side with Eric Bischoff on that, because he probably... If he doesn't like that, he's probably suggesting something that people would like because nobody else liked that. You know what I mean? So I don't know what to think of this. This could be really good. This could be really bad. This could be nothing. It's way too hard to tell based off the idea that we have no idea what Bischoff was doing. We don't even know what his job technically was, let alone what he was doing for the job, let alone what his ideas were and whether or not they were bad or it's somebody who has bad ideas, not liking good ideas. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Now, before we move on, let me remind you of a couple other things that I didn't mention earlier because I just forgot about plugging some other stuff. Just in case you do not know, we have a merchandise shop. Uh, we have actually a couple. There is a tea Public and a Red Bubble shop for Smart Out Moment. And there's also two other ones. There's one for A Mango Tees, and there's one for Fanboys Anonymous. So if you want to peruse the merchandise stuff and see if there's anything that you're interested in, keep in mind that that's a good way to support the channel because whatever of the profit side of that comes my way, that stuff is going to help me continue to do more stuff going in the future. But even more so is the Patreon. Now, the Patreon has a bunch of different tiers, so you could start off with a buck, or if you got five bucks or whatever spare change that you got that you want to toss our way, then that's greatly appreciated. We have a couple different people that have been doing that, and they are, of course, super awesome. They are part of the Smart Club on the website. Those are Robert Galera, Guest5, Deadshot, Kyle, and Michael. So uh, awesome, awesome people. Various donations. Uh, Guest5 is going to be doing the Pick Your Poison thing. If I remember correctly, he suggested the all-time wwe draft so if that's the case then we will work on that and we'll probably do that next week or so and if you want to take part of that and you want us to do a particular different kind of special feature you want us to do like a fan ounce table of a match or you want us to do some kind of a special thing on the website because it doesn't have to be podcast related it could be something on the website too you know i'll write up a special episode not to episode if it's an article but you know i'll write up something that's like uh, scouting talent or a uh, history lesson thing or you know anything that you got in mind as long as it's within reason then consider hitting up that pick your poison tier but even if it's a buck that all actually helps quite a bit so keep that in mind and the same thing for fanboys anonymous there's patreon for that there's the merchandise stuff you should follow the youtube channel the social media accounts and all that kind of stuff and if you don't know what fanboys anonymous is that's my site where i do movie reviews and I talk about anything else in the geek culture spectrum. If there's something about comic books or TV shows or video games or even music sometimes, very rarely, but uh, any of that stuff, it's going to be on that website. And I got plenty of different ideas that I just haven't had the time to do. So the more support the Fanboys Anonymous gets, the more that I can actually take time out of my schedule to do more Fanboys stuff. And I would love to do a million different things there. The most recent stuff that I've had has been... Some stuff like the Joker movie review, and I'm going to see uh, Zombieland, I think, this week. I think that this comes out this week, so I'll probably do some kind of a review based off of that. Maybe even get Caroline in on that one, so that way we can have like some kind of fun with, with that kind of thing. But 
We recently did an audio commentary track for Batman Mask of the Phantasm, as requested by Guest 5, so check that out. Episode 24 of the Fan Tracks podcast. I got my review of Wonder Woman Bloodlines and so many different ideas. I, I really, if I started listing them, it would take forever. But yeah, I got lots that I could have coming your way. So the more that you guys support that, the more that you will see coming out of that from me. So that's kind of all the plugs out of the way. Let me just get them all out while I'm at it. Before moving on to this one, which is WWE We Ride Along, Braun Takes Manhattan was the episode. In one car, you had Mike and Maria Kanellis. In the other car, you had EC3, Drake Maverick, and Braun Strowman. And I actually liked this episode quite a bit. wasn't the biggest fan of the Mike and Maria Kanellis part as much as the EC3, Drake Maverick, and Braun Strowman stuff. That was definitely the highlight for me, but I enjoyed it quite a bit, and it made me really want ice cream. So <laughs> I'm not going to really spoil anything. Uh, there's nothing that stands out to me as like, this is a great moment that you need to know, and that way you don't have to watch the episode because I already told you the best thing or something like that. I just say, go ahead and check it out. It's like 18 minutes long, and it's worth the watch. So that's the WWE Network thing of the week. I know that they had that Black Heart thing from Tommaso Ciampa, and that was just a re-airing of all the things that they had put up on YouTube before, so that's not worth it if you've already seen that, so about an, half an hour or so of watching that i was just like crap i've seen this all already but the last thing that i want to talk about here is this thing that was brought on not that long before i started recording actually alex from the Mega Maniacs chat actually got me aware of this there's some kind of an impending announcement from the japanese side of pro wrestling and this has been reported from the observer it's all this talk about this is going to be a big episode of the observer it's you know a whole section is going to be dedicated to it so this is supposed to happen at five in the morning or so and i'm not going to be awake at the time i'm hoping at the very least because sleep would be awesome but it could be a bunch of different things now one of the things that people are speculating about and this is something that i think there's a chance that this is the case is that there's going to be some kind of a collusion between the Japanese promotions, whether it's New Japan or some other kind of grouping, and NXT, and that this could be the announcement of NXT Japan. Now, it might not necessarily be the case. Some of the other things that people are speculating about is maybe there's some, uh, it's going to be a women's division starting with New Japan, or that there's going to be some other kind of partnership between New Japan and NOAA, or I don't, I'm not too familiar with that side of things. I gotta be honest, like, if people started to name a bunch of different companies, I wouldn't be able to tell you any anything about them or whatever, but I do think that there's a good chance that NXT Japan does get announced, because that's been a rumor that's been happening for quite a while, and if they were gonna do another NXT side of things, where else would they really do it? NXT Mexico? NXT Canada? It, that's kind of covered a little bit through the North America side of things, so NXT Japan seems like the next thing to go with. And if they want to do some kind of a partnership and they're able to decide on some kind of a partnership between that and another company, then, you know, all that much more power to them. But I also kind of think that maybe they're just, they're expanding a little too much because how much focus does NXT UK get? And you got to pay attention to NXT and Raw and SmackDown. And, uh, I don't know. It, it, this could be a disaster or it could be amazing. Who knows? I would not be looking forward to you know, the idea of having to do an, another whole hour's worth of watching wrestling every single week, but we'll see. I don't know. It might have nothing to do with NXT. So, obviously, if we get more information about that stuff, we will cover it on another Hot Tag edition, or we'll cover it maybe even really quickly on the draft special that we're going to be doing, because that's the next thing that we're going to do. It's going to be a review of the draft. And obviously, by that point, we're going to know what that blockbuster trade is. We hopefully will know more about these free agents. And if not, we'll discuss that more in detail. And we're going to go through the Raw and the SmackDown rosters, talk about the things that are great, talk about the things that they're lacking on. If you want to know my opinions about it as far as what last night happened, you can check out the post that I wrote up for Bleacher Report of SmackDown versus Raw, who won the brand draft this year. And... Anything else that you want to pay attention to, just follow the Facebook and Twitter accounts at Smartout Moment. Follow me on my accounts at A Mango Tree and at Tony Mango. Of course, the Fanboys Anonymous stuff is at Fanboys Anonymous social media accounts. Just stay tuned, everybody. You know, if you hit that bell and you subscribe and all that, you'll be aware of whatever we do anything. But we'll see you next time later on this week with that review 
Thank you for listening to this, everybody. Make sure you drop your comments below and tell me what you think. And I will see you when I see you. This has been another Smart Cap Moment, and I'm being counted out. Ah!